Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 39 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about working with details view without using any data source control. In part 37, we discussed about using SQL data source control. And in part 38, we discussed about using object data source control. In this video, we'll discuss about working with the details view without using any data source control at all. I strongly recommend to watch parts 37 and 38 before proceeding with this video. So when the web form loads, it has to display ID, first name, and city columns within the grid view control. And then once I select an employee by clicking the select button, you know, for the selected employee, we should show their full details within the details view control. Let's see how to achieve this without using any of the data source controls. Now the grid view control should display four columns. You know, um, the first column should be the template field which will display the select button and then the rest three fields should be you know the bound fields ID, first name and city. So let's design our grid view control. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop a grid view control onto the web form. And let's auto format this. Let's choose brown sugar scheme. And let's click on this edit columns link button within the grid view tasks. And then let's add a template field and then three bound fields. Now the important thing here is we don't want this grid view to be auto generating columns. So I'm going to uncheck this checkbox auto generate fields. And then if you look at the template field within the grid view control, it doesn't have any header text, but the bound fields have header text. So let's go ahead and set the header text for the bound field. So the first bound field is going to have a header text of ID. And the data for this bound field is going to come from the ID property of the employee object. And then for the second bound field, it's going to be first name. And the data field is going to be first name as well. And the third bound field is going to be city. And the data field is going to be city. So click OK. So we have finished you know, designing our bound fields. Now look at the template field. It doesn't have anything within that. But then when the grid view renders, we need a link button there, which when I click, you know, the row should be selected. And for the selected employee, the details should be displayed within the de uh, details view control. So we need a select a link button within the template field. And to do that, click on Edit Templates link from Grid View Tasks. And then within the item template, drag and drop a link button. And then this link button, go to the properties, and the text of the link button should be select. It could be any you know text that you want, but I'm you know, setting that to select. And another important thing here is the command name property. So the command name, I'm going to set this to select full details. Again, this can be anything, um, but I'm setting it to select full details. In a bit, we'll see how we are going to use this command name property. And at this point, let's end template editing. OK, so obviously, when this web form loads, you know, we should show this data within the grid view control. And if you remember, in the previous session, we have built employee data access layer. And this employee data access layer class has got two methods. The first method is get all employees basic details. And if you look at what this method is returning, it is returning a list of employee basic objects. OK, and if you look at this employee basic object, it has got these three properties, ID, first name, and city. OK, which is exactly what we want to display within the grid view control. It's returning a list, meaning all the employees, which is what is going to act as the data source for our grid view control. So within the web form one page load event, so if it's not a post back, meaning if it is the initial get request of this web form, then for grid view one control, the data source is going to be employee data access layer dot get all employees basic details. And what is this method returning? Look at the IntelliSense. It's returning a list of employee basic objects. So that will be the source. And then obviously we need to invoke the data bind method. Okay, so at this time, if I go ahead and run this, as you might expect, all the employees details will be displayed within the grid view control. And obviously when I click the select button, nothing is going to happen because we haven't written any code to respond to that click event. So let's do that now. So obviously, when we click the select button, you know what event does the grid view control raises? It raises a row command event. 
okay so let's go ahead and generate an event handler method for that event and to do that I'm going to the properties of the grid view control by pressing F4 and then click on this lightning uh, bold symbol and then the event is rule command double click on that to generate the event handler method so what should happen within this event handler method you know obviously when we click that button the employee should be the employee row should be selected within the grid view control and for that selected employee the detail should be displayed within the details view control and to speed things up i have i have already typed that so let me copy and paste that within the event handler method let's format this properly Okay, another important thing at the moment we don't have the details view control on our web form yet. So let's drag and drop the details view control. And let's auto format that as well. Let's choose brown sugar scheme. Okay. So now let's go into the code behind file, look at the event handler grid view one underscore row command. What are we doing here? The first thing is look at this. We are checking if e dot command name is equal to select full details. Now what is this e? There's nothing but grid view command event arguments object. Okay, so this object has got a property command name. If that is equal to select full details, and if you remember, we have set this as the command name, you know, when when we dragged and dropped that link button within the item template so the command name here is select full details so if the command name is select full details then what we want to do we want to get the row index in which the user has clicked the select index i mean uh, select button because once we get the row index it's very easy to select that row within the grid view control look at this here we are computing the row index using this line and once we have the row index, we are passing that to select row function, which is going to select that row within the grid view control for us. And look at how we are retrieving the row index. It's pretty straightforward. Now, look at this. This is where it all starts. E dot command source. What is the command source? We know it's the link button because once I click this button, that's when the event is raised. So the command source here is the link button. So e dot command source will be the link button. That's why I'm typecasting it to link button because command source will return an object back. We know that we are expecting a link button. So we are typecasting it to link button. And where is this link button present? This link button is present inside a grid view row object. So this entire thing is a grid view row within which we have this link button. And to get a reference to that grid view row, I am using the naming container property. Okay, so the naming container is actually returning a control back, but we know it's going to be a grid view row and we are typecasting it to the grid view row. And the reason why we are typecasting it to the grid view row is because it has got this row index property, which we can used to retrieve the index I mean row index basically so we are selecting the row and then look at how I am retrieving the uh, selected employees ID so within the grid view control we have an employee so we need this employee ID okay so to retrieve the employee ID I am using the selected value property of the grid view control okay so how is this selected value going to be populated when we select a row within the grid view control, then, you know, basically, we can set a property on this grid view control called data key names. So data key names is equal to ID column. So that data, the key field for this grid view control is going to be ID because that's the primary key within our TBL employee table by which we can uniquely identify an employee. So the key field within the grid view, field, uh, grid view is going to be ID. So now, when we select an employee row within the grid view control, what's going to happen? It will automatically populate the selected value with the key field. In our case, it's ID. So this selected value property will have the ID of the employee that we have selected within the grid view control. Okay. So using which we are retrieving that employee ID. And then all that is left out is to call this method you know, get employee full details and pass it employee ID. And what is this method going to return? It's going to return an employee object. Now, the strange thing that's happening here is you might be wondering, um, why are we even building a list? We'll understand that in a bit. For now, I'm just going to copy that line and I'm going to set that as the data source here. Look at this. This method is going to return an employee object. We are setting that as the data source for the details we controlled and invoking data bind. 
on details view control. I'm going to comment this line and run this at this time and see what's going to happen. We actually will get a runtime error when we select an employee within the uh, grid view control. Okay, look at this. I select this employee. Look at this. I get an error saying data source is an invalid type. So the data source for details view one control is invalid because it must be either an I list source, I enumerable, or I data source. Okay, so it has to be some kind of a list object. Okay, so obviously to satisfy that requirement, what am I doing here? I am creating a list, an employee list object. Okay, since this is a list of employee object, we need an employee object within this list. And what is this method returning? It's returning an employee object. And then I will use this list as the data source for our details view control, which should work as expected. So let me run this now. Everything should fall in place automatically. Okay, so I select PAM record. Look at this PAM record is selected, and I see all the details within the details view control as expected. All right, on the slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.